This is Loudspeaker. Hi, and welcome to Connecting a Better World, where we spend time meeting some of the most incredible human beings who make this world a better place. We will learn how each individual took their ideas, mission, and purpose to create and serve others in business and organizations that surround social good, social entrepreneurship, and social impact, and find out how we, together, can further connect others to help. I am your host, Dr. Natalie Phillips. Did you know negative online material and behavior are linked to higher levels of stress, anxiety, depression, and suicide in kids and teens. Just because students understand the mechanics of social media and digital technology, it doesn't mean that they know how to deal with issues like cyberbullying, harassment, inappropriate content, privacy, and safety. Today, I spend time talking with Kim Carr, executive director and co-founder of Hashtag I Can Help. A former teacher, Kim co-founded the nonprofit called Hashtag I Can Help and shows students and adults to use technology and social media for good. I'm also joined by Mallory Bornazian, 2018 Digital for Good winner, part of the 2019 Student Internship Program, and is now Hashtag I Can Help's lead intern. She is a junior at the University of Nevada in Las Vegas and is working towards a degree in journalism and media studies. Mallory believes in the power of social media and wants to help inspire students to find their purpose through their passions. Hashtag I Can Help's mission is to empower students with the tools and training that they need to protect themselves, develop their digital media toolkit, and use social media and other digital technologies positively and celebrates youth innovation, empowers digital change makers, and promotes digital safety. Here with Kim Carr, Executive Director of Hashtag I Can Help, and Mallory Bornazian, who is the student lead intern of Hashtag I Can Help. And I'm super excited because I literally met Kim a few days ago on this crazy new platform, but super fun, called Clubhouse, where people can kind of get together and meet each other and network and grow their businesses and just learn from each other. So Kim, I'm really excited to have you on. And um, Mallory, welcome as well. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for having us. So You're excited. welcome. Yeah. Okay. So let's first of all, get you guys introduced to my listeners and Kim, we'll start with you. Tell me a little bit more about you, you know, where you came from, what were you doing before um, hashtag I can help? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Um, so I was a teacher for 13 years. I taught in middle school, little awkward, awkward phases of life. Right. And uh, basically what happened was students kept coming to me with all these awkward, inappropriate stuff with their devices and they didn't know how to deal with it. So the best, the number one story that kind of created, I can help was a student came to me with a fake page on a teacher it was super cruel. It had like a thousand followers. It went on for two weeks. Not one student had told their parents or any teacher right at the school. So once a student finally came to me with it, they were scared that they're going to turn it in. Cause like people are going to make fun of me, right? Like I'm the, I'm the snitch. And I'm like, but would you want someone to make a page on you, right? So with that, we started educating them on like how to handle it, like text your friends, ask them to report it, ask them to comment in favor, like this isn't okay. And we started having that conversation. A year later, someone made a fake Instagram page on the exact same teacher. But this time the students knew how to handle it because we had that conversation. They were able to take it down in 45 minutes and there was nobody who followed and there were 30 something, 30 plus students who commented in favor of taking the page down. So wow. it's just kind of cool, like when you just simply give them the power and they know how to act, right? They knew how to in intervene. But if you don't give them that power, they don't know what to do. Yeah. So that's kind of how it's. And then from there, we teamed up with Twitter and I got on the Twitter safety board because they started asking me, how are you getting students to, you know, report stuff? And I'm like, well, I had to teach them what mitigate was because I, I didn't I had to look that up as an adult. I have no clue. It was eight steps to report back then in 2013. Oh and gosh. so just teaming up and telling them, like, you have to simplify this for students. If you want them to do it, you've got to simplify it for them and educate them. What kind of teacher were you and were you active already on social media? 
Uh, so I taught leadership and uh, hence PE. So I was I call my I call myself the fun police. I was like the fun police on campus, right? So, and yeah, I mean I was on Facebook and Instagram, and then I'm a big person, big believer in I should never walk in front of students on devices. Like I should always walk side by side with them if they're on. If they moved, when they moved over to TikTok, I got a TikTok right away. Well, it was actually Musical.ly. I was first on Musical.ly. Mm -hmm. My niece has got it. Yeah, you remember Musical.ly? Yeah. So I was on Musical.ly and then um, started being active on that. So I was trying to always be walking side by side with them. If they're playing with it, I want to play with it too so I can see what the issues are going to be and so I can have those conversations. So if kids are playing with Pokemon, I was in there playing with Pokemon so I could kind of understand what they're talking about. (laughs) Okay, so do you have kids of your own? I have four nieces and then I have amazing students that like Mallory, who I really believe that they're, she's also kind of my niece now, like adopted into my, into my family. Oh, that's awesome. All right, Mallory, how about you? How did you get involved in all of this? Yes. So I'm a junior at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, and I originally got involved with I Can Help after being a Digital for Good winner back in 2018. A group of students and I in my community started a group where we went out and did presentations with our district attorney about human trafficking and the connection between social media and human trafficking. And after being recognized at Digital for Good, I fell in love with I Can Help. It felt like the perfect place for me to be involved and be able to make an impact. And I really connected with Kim and believed in the movement of having educators walk alongside students to be able to make students part of the solution. And so I became an intern and then I worked my way up to being the lead intern. So now I oversee students from 17 different states and four different countries. And we have nine interns and we have over 60 specialists in our annual program. Wow. Okay. So winner of Digital for Good. So let's talk a little bit more about Digital for Good then here. So tell me what that's all about. Yes. So Digital for Good is an event where we recognize students who are driving change by using their digital resources to create a positive impact, whether it be in their community, online, um, but promoting something that they're passionate about. We have all different types of projects um, that are recognized. And it's about the tech industry recognizing these students and being involved in the impact that they're making and celebrating youth innovation. Um, so it's a two-day summit that we host, and it is such a jam-packed event full of each winner gives a Shark Tank presentation, where they're then able to sit down with somebody from the tech industry and get feedback on their project and be able to improve their pitch. And then the second day, they give a live keynote where they talk about their project and are able to bring awareness to it as well as talk about things like fundraising and how students can get involved to be part of the solution in their projects as well. And it is live streamed. Um, It's typically hosted at a tech company, but this year is going to look a little bit different in full COVID style. Yeah. Okay. So 2018 winner, you're, it's 2021, but technically 2020 and you're a junior. So you did this when you were a freshman or was it your last year, your senior year of high school? Yes. So we did the um, project as part of my senior project. And so we were seniors when we originally did it, but we were recognized in the fall of my freshman year in college. I see. So do, what are the ages that are able to be a part of the summit? Yeah. So um, we say it's 13 and then 13 to 23 year olds. We did actually, when we were at Google, because of the tech industry, you're supposed to be 13 to have a TikTok, right? Or Snapchat, right? So, but when we were at Google um, at the second year, their, their age range lower. So we actually had our first 12 year old winner because of the the project that she works on LiveBits. She makes little videos about uh, books and how she promotes kids to read and she's now in seventh grade and so she's got tons of followers she's got actually a lot of administrators who follow her on her twitter account and her mom's in the digital literacy space so that's kind of how she got her passion and started that piece so I thought that's really cool that we were able to recognize somebody who was even younger than 13 and her mom helps her of course with her social media so she's doing it legally Oh, that is so amazing. Okay, so how does Digital for Good, how is it connected to Hashtag I Can Help? Yeah, so we started our nonprofit, started off with Hashtag I Can Help. And it really was like, I was tired of all the anti-bullying campaigns because you, what is a bully and who is a bully? Like most people don't even know that they're a bully. And so I really wanted to steer away from that. It's so negative as well. And I wanted to focus on the positive because that's what I try to do with the students is focus on the positive stuff. Each of you guys can help. The question is, will you? And there's so many different ways you can help, right? And so, and then it was right when hashtags were kind of coming out and that trend was there. So my co-founder, Matt Soth, was like, we need to put the hashtag in front of it. So it is hashtag and help. But at some point, we're going to switch it to digital for good because that's what companies are resonating. So any company, school or student who wants to make digital for good, they're going to come to us and help. 
and they'll help with either leading, they'll help with us with education wise with their courses and trainings, or they'll be part of our community. So those are the three things that, and being part of our community includes, we need mentors, right, to mentor these students. And um, we're showcasing your platform. We, you know, we love to be able to highlight podcasts and have those kind of different things on there. So that's where we're, where we're driving towards. Awesome. Okay. And this is yearly, every year is a Digital for Good Summit, right? And it's a two-day summit. Yeah. So this year it's going to be a virtual event. It is going to be a four day event just because we know that uh, virtual you get exhausted. So it'll be a four day. The first day is like our growth. We call it our growth, digital for good growth, getting the mentors to help the winners grow their pitch. And you'll be able to come and watch that. And I think it's really cool. Like, honestly, the feedback we got last year, the people were there at Instagram headquarters were like, that was so cool to watch the growth of those winners, like to see their transformation. Michael was one of our winners last year, and his project was to help uh, veterans get into the, get to hospitals, right? Because they couldn't have transportation to get there. And so he wants to team up with p- companies like Uber and Lyft to get them rides. And so these mentors were kind of digging out of Michael because he's such a smart guy, like he's into STEM and stuff, and he's so smart. He didn't really know how to pitch it and tell the story. So these mentors really taught him how to share his story. And basically it went back to why he was so passionate about veterans is because his grandpa and his uncle were veterans. Mm -hmm. So like, you have to share that, like you have to hit people's heart. Mm -hmm. And then from that, then he was able to get connected with, you know, tech companies, people that were able to introduce him to those companies he needed to get his project to go to the next level. Wow. It's just giving me chills and goosebumps to hear this because it makes me so excited that you're starting so young to teach them the right way to use social media, right? I mean, there's a lot of adults and plenty of adults that are just like, oh, I can't stand it. Like, I'm going to stick away. You know, the social dilemma came out, right? And everybody's like, I'm getting off Mm -hmm. and everything like that. And, you know, but you're doing it the right way. You're, You're giving them the platform and giving them a space to explore, create, but then also do it in a way that's going to actually make some social impact versus just like, I'm getting on there to look at my friends and post, you know, selfies and whatever it is, you know, that, that, um, you know, teens can possibly just do. So that is incredible, you know, which brings me back to Mallory then. So I have a question. So your project that one, are you taking it any further with the human trafficking or are you kind of done? Or is it like when the projects are done, um, is it something that you can still work on afterwards? Right. No, it definitely is. For me, we were part of a education and outreach work group under my district attorney. So the way it works is because we started the student group, we're able to pass it down. Um, so we pass it down to the next generation of seniors, and then they're going to continue to pass it down. Um, so it's still there, unfortunately, since I moved out of state. I'm not still involved necessarily directly, but of course, I still support them, definitely support the organization. And then because of my experience at Digital for Good, I've built connections where I've been able to take um, all of the incredible mentors that I was able to build those connections with and get involved with them once I was in Las Vegas. Um, so one of them was Jeff Lebo. He holds a red carpet event for his daughter's NF um, Hope Benefit concert. And so that was one thing I was able to continue to be involved with and continue using Digital for Good with um, that I got from being a Digital for Good winner. Wow, okay. So I'm gonna back up just for a second too because a lot of people think, oh, you know, um, not saying that you guys aren't special, but like you have to be special to have like this opportunity and right and all this kind of stuff. But I wanna show people that it's just everyday people that are taking this leap and taking this step, right? To be able to give back. So I wanted to ask both of you and um, let's start with Kim. Was there somebody in your life, like a role model or a mentor that either, you know, you were exposed to or helped direct you in the way of always having this kind of in the back of your mind to, hey, I'm going to go from teaching, which is also serving, right, to now look at like this big, huge thing that I'm doing. Was there somebody that maybe um, you can think back that may have uh, put that seed in your mind early on? Yeah, absolutely. Both my parents, I think since I was like born, they've they're always taking me to go volunteer. If it is to go rake the neighbor's lawn or to go shovel, I'm from the, I'm from I'm the Midwest originally. We would go shovel people's lawn, like, um, driveways. Like my dad's still at 70. He's still out, plow, like when it snows, he goes out and um, snow plows five of the neighbor's like driveways. Like that's the kind of person they are. And so, and my mom is the same thing. Like we hosted so many um, students from different countries uh, because she worked at a college. So we would actually host them and we would have them up for when they couldn't go home for the holidays. We, we were the place they would come to for the holidays. So definitely they were a huge part in that. And then I had coaches like all my life because I was an athlete all the way through college and coach Dave, I just remember him constantly 
you know, really put in passion in me of teaching the younger generation. And uh, I remember being raised, like you like got to walk out the game ball out to the varsity players was such a huge deal. And so same thing, like brought that concept into the tech thing. Like if, if these students can just walk into the, the Twitter buildings and the Facebook buildings, like how cool is that? that they get to see like the, the magic there. Very cool. How about you, Mallory? Yes, absolutely. My mom was a huge role model to me growing up. I grew up in a smaller town, so I was very involved in my community, and I really believed in um, supporting the community that supported you as you grew up. And my mom was battling breast cancer, and she was working full days, and at the end of her day, she would go home and actually mentor virtually other women who were battling breast cancer. And it was something that she did because she loved and she wanted other people to understand some of the things that they might have to go through and understand that there's so many other women that are going through them as well. Mm -hmm. And so she just believed in spreading so much positivity and she had a blog where she posted about everything that she was going through. And so I really wanted to be able to be like that and just inspire other people who might be going through a similar cir circumstance as me. Mm -hmm. And so I really fell in love with I Can Help's mission and being able to make a positive impact and hopefully inspire other young students and show them that um, no matter where you come from or what you're going through, you can make positive impact, even if it's online. And yeah, so she just really pushed me to be really involved. And Kim ended up fitting in perfectly with my life and really just guiding me through this last chapter that I've been going through. Um, but totally my mom influenced the whole being involved and making sure that I'm making a positive impact. Yeah. Okay. I'm just smiling. Like I'm beaming. Cause I'm just watching you going, Oh my gosh, like you're, you're so well-versed and you talk about this so freely and so passionately, and you know that you're in the right spot right now. And I love that. So thank you. Thank, thank you. you so much for being here because it's literally like, I'm listening to you guys just, you know, having goosebumps, just watching and listening about all the work that you guys are doing. Okay. So let's dive into hashtag I can help and tell me a little bit more about the organization, what it's doing, what it's planning, you know, any events that are coming up. Um, let's talk a little bit more about that. Absolutely. So we are a nonprofit and we empower student change makers, promote digital safety and celebrate youth innovation. So we're constantly trying to get students involved to use digital for good and to make a positive impact in their community and online. So we have a ton of different branches that we do. One of my favorites is that we host student voice webinars once a month where students can come in and talk about different things that um, revolve around that month. So for example, January's Fresh Journey. So we're gonna have students come in and talk about their journeys through high school and really just inspire other students. But those are free webinars that students are able to come in and collaborate on together. We have curriculum for educators, parents, and students um, to learn about things like digital safety and how to be safe online. Um, and we have so many different courses that students are able to take advantage of. But we're definitely just trying to get students to use digital for good and realize that they can make a huge positive impact and be celebrated when they are using their digital resources positively. So are these resources um, paid, you know, subscription, or is it free? Um, who, who gets to be able to access what you guys are putting out there? Yeah, so uh, our student's voice webinar is free. So mm -hmm. any student can come in, and an adult. So it's actually, we want to get adults and students there because we want them to be inspired by these stories and even help them with their projects. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of what we're trying to grow there. We sell our curriculum and we sell our trainings. That um, Those are definitely pieces, but we're trying to, with our expansion of our business plan, we're trying to get companies like Twitter, they hosted uh, an event with 100 teachers at their headquarters so we can keep the price down mm -hmm. of that so we can train 100 educators on our curriculum to go back to their schools and then train their students. Then you're now impacting 100,000 students instead of just 100. So I think that's our model is getting more companies to host these training mm -hmm. events so we can get this education out as quick as we can because it's, I mean, cyberbullying went up 80% during COVID because they've not been taught. Like we basically gave them keys to a car and we were like, here, go and drive right here. Here's a device, go play. And they didn't know how to handle it. So we definitely have to kind of go backwards on the training of that piece. So we have, but we do have a lot of free curriculum because I under, I'm from a small school and they couldn't afford certain things. So we do try to keep the price down and we give away so much free content that we're here to provide. And that's where, you know, definitely needing more support to be able to have, make that happen. But we're, we're definitely, I, a former teacher, like, no, like when someone asks me for help, I'm, I'm there to help them. Yeah. So let's repeat that statistic because if you haven't heard, Kim said cyberbullying went up 80%, right? Since COVID? 80, it's actually 81% since COVID. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. wow. And here's the other big, here's the other big one. You being a, a doctor, you'll appreciate is like, 
the reason why we also started getting into mental health and wellness, this actually happened two years ago. We teamed up with Providence Health out of Oregon and they created the work to be well program where you truly have to work to be well, right? If you're something wrong with mental health, you have to work to be better. So we actually helped them create free curriculum around that. But suicide has now increased 200% for 10 to 14 year olds in suicide because they didn't know what it was. They're now being exposed to it with 24 hour media Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. and, you know, news media. And then also suicide is now the number one, number two cause of death for 10 to 24 year olds. In some states during COVID, it's increased to number one. So I think it's now six states is what I last heard. It's now number one in some states because of that. And it it really is like isolation and Mm -hmm. like they don't feel like they're connected or they're comparing themselves to others. They're seeing what people are, you know, like I see your life and I'm like, she's got it so great. So that's definitely why those numbers have increased. So we really have teamed up to really work on the digital wellness and the mental health part. Mm -hmm. So this is really interesting. So, you know, kids that could be listening to this or parents can get involved or tune in. What about um, businesses, corporate, um, you know, like you said, it's easier to maybe have possibly a corporate sponsor or maybe use some people that can be mentors. What do you need from people who are listening to this podcast? You take it, Mal. Yes, there's so many different ways that corporate organizations can get involved. One of my favorites is by becoming mentors for us. Um, So we work with mentors at different work days. They can also be committee mentors where they work with our students and work alongside of them. For me, having a mentor believe in me and support me makes my projects amazing because my confidence just goes up so much. So we love when we're able to have our mentors. One of my favorites was working with Sarah from Twitter. She just really inspired us. She works in their marketing team and they're just there to give us pointers, but also their guidance that they give us on those projects we are able to carry with us at school um, and in future career paths that we might be going down. So we love getting mentorship from them. Um, Also corporate offices can hold a virtual viewing party for our digital for good event. Um, So we've had some offices where, where if they are working in person, they played it. Um, on a common room TV where um, they were able to tune in during their lunch break, anything like that. Um, But they can also sponsor. Kim, do you want to talk a little bit about the sponsorships? Yeah, absolutely. So we're looking for, you know, like matching, like companies that do matches, Mm -hmm. uh, any kind of companies that can even, they can do a digital wellness training with their companies. So we actually will come in with someone like Mallory, one of our students to be able to help them teach them about digital wellness for their staff. Cause I think that's learned, or they can even get us to come in and do it for their staff. So we can train them about the safety for their kids. Cause I think that's so important that we got to get these parents on board on what to, what they need to know about social media for their, their kids to keep them safe and keep them healthy from the social media piece. So we're definitely, and even especially this lower income during COVID, the equity piece was so big. Like we need to get that sponsorships to be able to get that piece. So we have it all in our sponsorship packages of how, how companies can help to partner up with us. And this is also on your website that they can check it out. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. So then they would reach out to us to be able to get, um, they can go on there if they're interested in being a sponsorship and the bookings on there as well. I uh, see. Okay. So mm-hmm. it was funny because I was going to ask you, you know, what would be your ideal corporate avatar, right? But as you guys were talking, I was thinking it's for everybody. Like any business could technically have a showing, a viewing, you know, or you guys could come in and do something. Um, because what you're really looking at is not really about what the business is about, but it's the people of the business mm-hmm. and their lives. And so if a business were interested in doing something like this, it's really providing a service to their employees or their staff for them to go out and and yes it can be somewhat about safety while you're using social media as a business but then also you know they can definitely take it further and take it back into their own homes you know with their own children or family members or spouses or whatever it is so really there it's for everybody there's not a certain type of avatar that you're really aiming for it's anybody and and I think it's really important to bring out this point that everybody can be involved then you know and with that statistic like if everybody actually paid attention then we could bring that statistic down I just feel like we could right Mm -hmm. um okay so what do you guys still have some obstacles that you are facing or that you still face or what keeps you motivated to continue down this road and to provide some of these services and trainings? I think for me, one of the most inspiring things is how many students we keep getting that are so interested in being involved in our organization, especially over COVID times. Um, I would have thought it would have been a time that we were going to struggle with getting student volunteers 
and it blossomed and grew so big that we now have a second internship program for seasonal interns for college students who just need college credit and are interested in learning from our mentors um, and being involved in our organization. So our internship program is almost doubled because of all of the students who are interested in working um, remotely and they're seeing how important it is right now to be able to use digital for good and to know how to report things online. Um, so just seeing how many students are passionate about the same things as us and want to be involved with our organization um, and the inspiring emails that they send to us really inspire me. What about you, Kim? Yeah, oh, great question. Thank you for asking it because, it, it, you know, nonprofits, we actually, um, we've been really self-sufficient because we get all of our money from schools paying us to come in and do trainings and, and curriculum. But I will tell you, COVID hit us, right? Just like anybody else, like it did hit us because we lost that piece. So definitely sponsorships to be able to get us out of this way, to be able to keep supporting these students and their projects, because I will tell you, we've tripled, if not quadrupled in students, but then I'm not getting the adults. So I will tell you, we need a call to action for more adults to get involved, to be mentors, to help us even be grant writers. Like we, you know, we need help with grants. Uh, th those kind of different pieces are huge, huge piece. But honestly, I need, like they, like Mallory said, like any kind of mentoring, like we just got done doing a 21 day uh, digital wellness challenge where that's going to be a video course. And it truly was created by 100% the students with the help of a digital wellness coach. And so she helped teamed up with them, but then got Twitter's marketing and salesperson to come in and work with them on their sales. And then I got a video person to come in and teach the video people how to make this a corporate kind of feel of a kind of a you know piece. And that's the mentoring that I can't give, but then we get outreach to other people. So I think that's where, it's amazing when that goes down, but we just need definitely more adults to be able to get a part of it because the students feel it, they see it and they're helping. And now we need the adults to see it, that it's an issue and start helping. Yeah, I think it's so cool because um, let's make that a call to action. So everybody that's listening, you know, maybe you can be a mentor. So let's talk a little bit more about you know, what would a mentor do? So if people are thinking about it and wanting to reach out to you, um, what would they do? Like they might have that um, that uh, limiting belief that I don't know if I can do this, right? But I'm sitting here, that's why I have this huge smile on my face. So I'm sitting here going, okay, technically you're a mentor, but I bet you anything, these kids would actually teach you something as well, right? So, but let's talk about the adult side. I mean, I was kind of laughing to myself about that thought, but let's talk about the adult side because because if there are people that are listening to this and they want to help out, like what exactly would a mentor do? There's many different ways that you can be a mentor. For us, you could come to a work party and work with a different committee. So maybe you have experience with graphic design, maybe you have experience with grant writing, um, writing blogs, public relations, anything of that nature. We will sit you down with a student who's interested in the same thing and be able to work on a project to promote digital for good or promote one of our student voices webinars. Um, so not only are students working on projects, but then after we give you the opportunity to share maybe your experience um, or how you got to your career path. And then also sometimes they'll do like 10 minute little workshops for us, um, whether it be about how to add, I can help to your resume, how to use LinkedIn. Sometimes one of our mentors will pull up one of our social media accounts or will pull up our LinkedIn account and give us all our feedback um, on how we can improve outside of I can help. So it's really just providing support for our students. Mentoring can mean so many different things, but for us, it really just means giving the students the confidence that they need to complete their projects um, and to feel like they're getting something out of this as well. So definitely by being a mentor, you can help provide a mini workshop and something that you're passionate about. You can review some of our work and just provide advice to our students. I like to say even parents can be mentors. And one of the ways that you can do that is just by sharing our content on your own social media accounts. Um, I know my mom attended Digital for Good in 2018, and afterwards she was like, I'm part of the family, I'm involved, Kim said I'm involved, and I'm like, okay, mom, how are you involved? And she's like, I'm going to like, I'm going to comment, I'm going to tag. Um, so really, it's just sharing our content and having more students be able to see it, too. That's an easy way to be a mentor um, and use Digital for Good yourself to inspire students and younger adults. Awesome. That's a great explanation. Okay. Sign me up. Like I'm serious. Like I'm going to, I want to be a mentor, you know, and whether, I mean, I might learn something and then be able to teach it to my own kids, but right. there are a few things I was like, oh my gosh, I can do that. I'm like, check, 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 you know? Okay. So we'll have to figure that out when we're done, but totally. Yep. Yeah, sign me up. And if anybody's listening and you just feel that little tiny urge, just do it. There are so many, you just heard it. There are so many students that they've got now, but they need the adults. They need the mentors out there and it's time. I just feel like it's time to step up. Right. And so, um, okay. So that's done. Like I'm signed up. I'm going to get signed up. Okay. <laughs> Kim, what about you? What are you thinking? Yeah. I think on the corporate like side of it, right. Is if, 
Twitter is a perfect example. Like they've been just an awesome company to work with because they have what's called Twitter for Good Day, where it's a give back day. And so we are one of the co companies that they team up with. And so they'll send us on that day. They'll be like, what's your project? They'll push that out to all their employees and they give us their employees for a certain amount of hours to work on projects. We've gotten so much production done because of that, those kind of days. So, and then, then there's companies like Apple that I have a, a, one of our mentors that we have a year long program that we get a mentor that works with them during their monthly call. So if you want to be a year long mentor, you would work with the same team for, you would be at the call. If you can't be at the call, it's totally fine. You just send a mentor in your place to be able to be on that call. Cause you're just there to be supportive. Really the students are the ones who are in charge. <laughs> like I'm just their fangirl is what I always tell them. I'm just your fangirl. You're just there to be a fan person and like supportive of them and then just give them any kind of connection. So like if they're, um, if they're you know, needing someone in marketing, then you kind of bring them someone in marketing. So that, those are the big pieces they incorporate. There's so many things that they can help. And the matching pieces is is definitely a way that you can support because uh, there's just, everyone can help. The question is, will you, right? Like we need yeah, your help. Exactly. If you're, you got a device, you can help somehow. Yeah. And I think I was laughing because I was part of um, this Girl Up organization <clears throat> and I went down to Washington, D.C. and I was a mentor, you know, and I was like, oh, man, how am I going to do this, you know, with all these girls and what are we going to do and everything? OK, these girls that were in middle school and high school blew me away. We were supposed to go to, you know, the legislators and they had the whole speech going. They had the app going. They knew exactly where they had to. Go. I literally was following them around. I said nothing. All I had to do was be there. And I learned so much from them. And it was mm -hmm. just incredible. So it's exactly like what you're saying. And that's why I'm so excited, because even though I'm like, yep, I'll be a mentor. I'm like, those kids are going to teach me so much. It's going to be so much fun. So I think that you're right on um you know, on target with that is that I think it goes both ways. And I think that um, if the adults would just be confident enough to step up, I swear, you're probably not going to have to do much except for be there. And those kids, they're already so confident and they're already like such go-getters. I feel that you literally have to show up and like be a fly on the wall, you know, but you're going to learn so much and it's going to, you know, it's going to give back to you as well. So I'm, I'm all for supporting you guys saying, let's get the adults going. Um, because I think the kids, I think um, kids and the teenagers have so much to teach us as well. And I think it goes both ways. And I love that. Yeah. Totally. Awesome. Okay. So let's see. Um, do you have any statistic that st do you have any statistics that you're proud of with your organization so far? And how long, let's talk about how long has your organization been around? Yeah, we've been around since 2013. And um, yeah, our stats Whenever we, we do a pre and post survey before we go do trainings. And so one of the steps we're proud of is we've 92% once we were get done, 92% of the students say that they'll actually step up and speak up about things. So we call it digital first responder, that they will be this digital first responder to actually say something. Because before, I think it was like 47% would say that they would do something and then it would turn into 90 92, 92% now say that they're going to change. So just from us doing a small training like that, change is a huge. The other one is, is we um, are proud that we can say we, we've decreased discipline by 30% on campus, because if you can decrease your online drama, you're going to decrease your drama and your discipline on your campus. So that's definitely a huge stat that we're really proud that we've been able to, to work on. That's really cool. Thank you for sharing that. I think that's really important to get out there as well. Um, do you, either of you have any projects or stories that may have during your experience that may have impacted you and touched you to continue to give back in this way? For me, it's just been working with the students. Um, this past summer, the students that we got were just outstanding. We had so many applicants for our internship program. Um, and I just remember our first meeting together at our training and how excited everyone was and knowing we have our um, second training coming up in January for our mid-year check-in and seeing everyone's growth and improvement. I was reflecting on some of our projects um, and most importantly, seeing their confidence grow, I think is what really inspires me. I think attending their committee meetings at the beginning, their mentor definitely was doing some of the work um, and giving advice and feedback and then checking in now, I feel like the student is definitely giving the mentor some advice and feedback as well. Um, so seeing their confidence really boost has always touched me. And we're such a family. We always say that once you're in the iCount family, it's impossible to get out of it. You're always going to be in it. Um, so even when our interns graduate or they hire onto a full-time job, they're always part of our family. And seeing them come back is just really inspiring to me. 
um, and knowing that you can always be part of the I Can Help family once you're in it, you're definitely in it for life. What about you, Kim? I love this question, but I also don't like this question because I always tear up. So <laughs> I need to make sure I get in the right space um, to be able to share it so I don't like just become a complete mess. Um, <laughs> trying to get the, like, there's so many of them. There's so many different stories. And I think I'm going to share a couple and I'm going to share two that I think come to mind. And I'm going to start with uh, Olivia is a perfect example. So Olivia actually... Ross, I don't know if that's the one you were thinking of, Molly, but uh, Olivia Ross, who's out of Oregon, I met her actually last February at a conference, and she just had a horrible situation that happened to her where um, she's a freshman. She had two seniors come up to her, ask her, hey, can you do a TikTok with me and jump with us? So they jumped, and then they tripped her and made her fall backwards and hit her head, right? And so she hit her head, got a concussion, had to go to the hospital. It was horrible. And it was this trend that was going on on TikTok where the kids thought it was funny, right? They thought this was a funny thing. They were laughing, but she really got hurt, right? And she's like, here she is mortified. And she's like, I trust, like here, I was like so excited that these seniors asked me to be in this TikTok with them. And she made it actually on like some local news and got on like different, you know, even national news for it because it was such a huge piece. Mm -hmm. And she kept calling to ask me like, what do I do? How, what can I, I want to start a nonprofit. So she's actually started a nonprofit to be able to have this, but she's now, she's also one of our specialists. She's a sophomore in high school. She's on the digital media team. She's making TikToks for us to like advertise like the positive stuff that you can be doing. So again, it's so cool to be able to see how these students can use this platform, even when something negative does happen, that they can spin it and make it such a cool experience, right? Like you, all of our winners have always gone through something super negative to make something amazing. And I know Mallory's wow. been so amazing um, this entire time on this podcast, but just so you know, like the mom that she speaks of passed away here in June oh. of cancer and her mom was such an advocate about cancer and made her be so positive. And it's just so neat that Mallory was able to be our lead in turn and like lead our team with positivity and like even post about it and like make it such a cool space that she's now trying to be an advocate for people who are being care, you know, caregivers for their parent, right? Like that's such a cool space that now her at 20 years old can inspire more people that have gone through the same thing so that they're not alone, like how she felt, right? Yeah. Like it just, digital is so amazing and we just need to teach them how to use it correctly, mm -hmm. which is so powerful. Yeah. And it's so crazy because as you told the story of Olivia, I was imagining a freshman in college and, a, and seniors in college. And you're like, and now she's a sophomore in high school. I was like, wait, 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 wait. So this ninth grader, and I have a sophomore. So mm. this ninth grader was smart enough to reach out to somebody and then start a nonprofit. Like that is crazy. Like how, I have so many questions, but how did she even get that in her mind when this awful thing happened to her, you know, and to turn around so quickly at such a young age, you know, that's okay. crazy. Well, because she saw the presentation where I'm sharing these student stories where it's like, hey, here are these sophomores in high school who created a podcast and now they're seniors in high school and they just interviewed Prince Harry and Meghan Markle. And they're just talking about mental health and what it's like to be a high school. So it's and from that story alone, there's been hundreds of students from us hearing that that have created their own podcast. And that's what it is, is. We keep just like the news. That's all they want to post is the negative stuff. We mm -hmm. have to start getting companies to say, hey, we want to sponsor you. We want to sponsor these students and then share these stories because we have to get this out. Like people need positive stuff in yes. our, our news feed. And so it just stops being so toxic and, and yep. draining because you, you are what you see. And mm -hmm. we have to start changing what we're seeing and, and our, what are what we're following. Yeah. And this is exactly the reason why I started this podcast was because I, I am a social media person. And I love it. But at the same time, I got tired of all the negativity. And all I wanted to do was make sure that it was, there was something going out that was good. That's all I wanted it to be, you know? And so this is exactly, you know, aligning with, you know, what you're telling me as well. So that's awesome. Okay. So I want to hear about your other story too. <laughs> I think it was in one with Mallory where, you know, again, when her mom, you know, passed away and she knows how to use her platform. Right. And she was very active in the, in the cancer thing that now she knows how to use that platform. And, you know, it is motivating her to use her platform in the right way. And when she's ready to write her book and when she's ready to, you know, do all those different things, like she's has years of experience now and years of mentoring from these people who are professionals that they'll be able to help her, you know, with the next level of it. Yeah. Oh, that's so exciting. Are you going to write a book, Mallory? 
Yes, I'm a journalism major, so I love writing. So I originally got involved with I Can Help after writing a blog about digital for good because um, one of the winners, she told the story about how no success comes without struggle and that struggle is a bridge to success. And I think that's really what really brings us all together at Digital for Good is hearing the backstory of why everyone started their project. Because as Kim said, no incredible project comes from an incredible life that had no issues. Um, so definitely I'd love to eventually write a book and I have started, but we'll see. Um, but yeah. because of all the mentorship and we work with Brandon all the time, Brandon Farbstein, and he's incredible. I know he's written a book. so. He's very motivational and inspiring for me. But yeah, definitely from the support that I've gotten from I Can Help, that's something that is possible in the future because of it. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, that is so exciting. All right. So I just want to make sure that we covered everything that both of you wanted to cover to get hashtag I Can Help, to get digital for good out there. Is there anything else that you guys wanted to talk about at all? Um, well, one thing that we love to do is we love to showcase schools that are using digital for good and students who are using them. Um, so one way that you as listeners can get involved and be showcased on our platform is by tagging us in your posts. So you can tag us at I can help official or use the hashtag digi digital for good. Um, and we go through and reshare those posts. because We want to make sure that we're celebrating youth innovation and empowering more student change makers. Awesome. Okay. So hashtag I can help official. Yes. On okay. Instagram, we're at I can help official. And then on Twitter and Facebook, we're at I can help. Okay. And then um, digital for good is digital with the number four, right? Correct. Or is it digital? Okay. So digital with the number four and then good. Yes. Okay, awesome. Okay. So what might be one piece of advice that each of you can share with uh, my listeners about just making the world a better place? Kim, go ahead. Well, oh, I get a, you give me the loaded one. All right. I love it. Um, oh, one advice. You train people how you want to be treated by how you treat others. I think that's so important that we have to remember, no matter if it's online or offline, you train people how you want to be treated by how you treat others. And I think we're forgetting that. And you can't read on, on social media. I can't read your, your tone and I can't read context. No matter how many emojis I try to put in there, like I just can't read that. And so it's so we're reading things and we're getting our emotions so mixed up that it's so hard. So it is like train people, like you treat others are going to be treated is so important and you train them that way, right? So we now sometimes need to pause and take a step back. Like if we see something negative on thing, instead of just reacting right away, take a step, get some room to be able to think about it before you react. And I just think we just have to remind ourselves that you're constantly training. There's always someone watching you. You're a mentor to somebody, no matter how old you are, even if you're two years old, like Man, my nieces, when they were, they're twin nieces and they have a little sister that's two years younger than them, at two years old, they were already a mentor to them. So I'm constantly telling them, like, someone's watching you, <laughs> seeing what you're doing. And we have to realize, like, to pause, take a step back and, and realize someone is watching you and, and we're mentors to people. Yeah, that's awesome. And Mallory, I would, going off of that, I would love for you to answer that as well. I know that you kind of pushed it off to Kim, but hello, you are at the table and you are just as confident and smart and wise. And so I would love for you, I know you have some good um, information and uh, just some thoughts as well. So I would love for you to answer that question. Thank you. Well, definitely. Um, with the digital space, everyone has a voice and I think it gives your voice even more power. So you have the power to make an impact online, even if it's small. If you're able to touch one person, it's training them to use social media for good. So they're going to be able to do it as well. Um, so whether it be something that you're passionate about, whether you're passionate about mental health, a sport, um, if you're passionate about something in your community, post about it, talk about it, and don't be afraid to use your voice online because it has so much of an impact. And the more people that are going to see it, they can share it and be able to spread your message. Um, so I think especially with all the digital resources we have right now, don't be afraid to use them to share things that you're passionate about um, and give yourself a purpose through that. Yes. Awesome. Well, you guys, I'm so glad that I met you and that you're here. I think this is going to be a great episode for so many people to learn so much from both of you. And I know that this is not going to be the end of our relationship because I feel like you guys are just like soul sisters for me. I'm just like, oh my gosh, like I can't wait to dive in. So um, I'm so excited. I'm so glad that you um, spent some time with me this evening to share a little bit more about what you do and how we can all get this out to so many other people. So thank you guys so much. Oh, thank you, Dr. Dr. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Natalie. Thank you so much. That was awesome. You're welcome. Thank you. We're so excited to have you as a mentor. So we're excited. Yay! To <laughs> Thank you so 
so much for tuning in to Connecting a Better World, and thank you, NOCO FM, for supporting this show. If you connected to something in this episode, we would love to hear from you. Our contact info will be listed in the show notes, as well as you can reach us on our social media channels. Please feel free to share our podcast with your friends and loved ones. For more shows, please tune in to noco.fm online. This is Loudspeaker.